Today, we're going to talk about insects. And you, I don't know how you know, some people came in, so I know our citizen scientists, uh, Dan and Nadia or Caden, uh, might have come from a volunteer form that we um, did with Amy Myrtle, who is also doing pollinator, but in the Somerville area. So uh, let me present, everybody seeing uh, everything, my screen. Tom, do you see it? Okay, good. Excellent. So I'm going to start. There we go. By the way, these are two, uh, this shot is mine, uh, the bumblebee here. And I took this shot in Somerville with my phone. And I say that because you know why, you, you know why I use my phone a lot because my phone is also my tool for recording data. So sometimes I take uh, more and more, I take a lot of pictures with my phone with a little tool that I, I add to it. And this one is a picture from one of our um, citizen uh, naturalist, uh, Joe. He's a fantastic follower of the Fels. So this one is with a camera. All right, this one's away. So that's me. And these are, we do work with this different site and you'll know a little bit more in a minute because you're going to see the different sites, but we work with Massaudobon uh, Habitat, Green Open Somerville and Somerville Growing Center. This is uh, Fresh Pond Reservoir and the Rangers, fantastic people. And I'm also, by the way, a board member of the Friends of the Fells. So I do a lot of things at the Fells. The Fells is really one of our big um, study area. So this is, for some it might sound like repetition, but actually it's going to be key because when you are in the field and when people come to you to say, what are you doing, who are you? By being citizen scientist at IWA, you need to know a little bit about IWA, right? So this is very simple. IWA, Earthwise Aware, is focused on biodiversity. And for us, what it means is that we want to bring biodiversity knowledge and science, ecological ethics, and environmental leadership to the core, to the heart of organization and communities and in the daily life of people. Uh, people know us through our outreach experience, you know, forest exploration in the fells, uh, as well as guides and etiquette. We write guides and etiquettes uh, about ecology, habitat, species, and human activities. Um, some know us through our nature circle, our nature lessons, kind of um, for helping, uh, engaging with nature, uh, with your family or alone. Uh, but most now start to know us because of our citizen science, and uh, which is really very much focused on biodiversity and climate research. Um, so for us and for me, so I'm French and both French and, America, and American now since a few years. And something that is very important is to it's about science and to give back science to the people, right? Uh, I think that now in our modern society and very much here, there is a kind of an unhealthy relationship between the people and science. Uh, there is uh, either this kind of, uh, you know, uh, we are subdued, you know, and we don't challenge, or there is a, a form of um, despise, which is not healthy. I mean, we need to come at something that is in between. Um, so for us, again, you know, it's about species and ecosystem knowledge. Uh, ecosystem is very important because you're going to learn with us that what we focus on is not just a single species or a single domain, but it's really about system. Uh, because a lot of data that is lacking is actually about how the systems work together. Ecological ethics is one of our pillars, and you'll know more. Um, I'm a data scientist, I'm a statistician uh, by training and by uh, profession, um, although I retired from it. Uh, so for me, open and global science and data is very important. And you know, again, that the democratization of science and to rebuild the healthy relationship between communities and science is really at the core of uh, what I do and what we do at EWA. All right, to go back, I need to see a little bit more the people here. I'm going to go there. Oh, excellent. Um, citizen science in action. So you are here because you're, you're interested in surveying insects, right? And you're interested also to learn about, uh, I'm going to say, um, uh, how to do that, you know, with uh, the visual survey, which is using tools, cameras, or phone, right? Um, is it hard to do? No, it's more about patience than anything. Um, are you going to learn something every single day, right? Is it useful? Uh, absolutely, it's critical, but it has to be done right, right? And this is something that I'm just adding recently. Uh, it's not because you're taking a picture that you necessarily have a relevant, scientifically relevant uh, uh, piece of information. So you're going to learn with us how to do that. Is it fun? Um, personally, I've had fun, you know, as long as I remember. So every single day that I'm out there, right, and I engage with the world, yes, I find that very fun. All right. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, couldn't move my things. Okay. 
A lot of data is lacking, and so here I just bring that so that you understand a little bit that what is going to interest us when you take those pictures out there, right? A lot of data is lacking, such as species interactions. So that's something when you are out there and you start taking picture to remember. Um, there is a lot of, I'm going to bring all the screen, all the slide in. Uh, but there is a lot of focus when you take picture on a single thing. You know, you have a tendency to zoom, to crop out, and to have just that bug, that bee, that's it, right? And that's what we upload, let's say, on platforms such as iNaturalist, which I'll describe in a minute. Um, by doing that, okay, so you have your bee. This is a kind of a detailed view of that bee. However, species interaction, what is that bee on is very important. And so thinking about the habitat, the environment around is also important and that needs to be brought in that set of observation. Um, so a lot of that are lacking and all the studies that we do all together, not just the insect, uh, they, they contribute uh, to this uh, set of uh, system that are lacking data. Maybe this one a little bit less because we are not really uh, touching on genetic. Um, so I just want to, to see, oh, the thing that is important as well is when you start surveying, having one picture is fine, looking at one thing in time is fine. However, what is lacking is to go repeatedly to the same area, you know, having opportunistic data all over the place, okay, cool. But what is really important in data is to have regularity, right? So coming back to that same spot and to look at that same plant and to see what land on that same plant on a regular basis is what is lacking often, and that's what we do. Right? Uh, not enough is observed, so um, uh, that's across time, for example, um, and in geographic areas, so that you know, we want to stand, and actually urban area are not necessarily looked very closely, and that's where we operate as well, in our urban areas. And important factors are missed altogether. So as I said, you know, species interaction is not, is often overlooked, this kind of thing. So we supply, we complement data uh, with our work uh, at Earthwise Aware. So, and that's where you're very important because, and what we do is very important because it helps filling a lot of those gaps. All right. I was trying to find, this is a new slide. This is a new view. Because, you know, one of the big thing is to always try to simplify as much as possible, you know, the content or what you discuss about. And um, because people are not used to see things in forms of system and say, oh my God, you're doing three surveys, I'm really confused, right? Uh, the simplest way of saying it, right, is, you know, our three surveys are complementary and they're very important to really bring a big global picture and how things fit together. One is about seeing, this is two days training. One is about counting, this is a caterpillar's count, Jennifer, right, and uh, the two Jennifers. And one is about linking, which is a phenology. So that's my simplest view. I came with that yesterday thing. How can I bring this view, you know, this uh, concept to our people? So seeing is about species occurrences and mapping, right? I'll show you the project. Accounting uh, is about, you know, composition as well, right? And counting what you don't have as well is important. And linking is about, you know, activity curve, etc. you know, putting things in relationship with one another, you know, plants with insects, etc., and birds, and this kind of stuff. So that was my, uh, my little moment yesterday where I said, oh, maybe that will work. Today it's about seeing, okay? Um, don't forget to add, so I'm not looking if there are questions, you know, in the chat since I'm the only one uh, leading that um, uh, talk, so I look at the very end. Uh, but if there is something that is absolutely urgent because something is not understandable, unmute yourself and talk to me. So seeing photography survey, what we use, our tool is iNaturalist. We had four sites where we really go there on a regular basis to have regularity. One is a growing center, which is currently closed, except you know, if you are with us, with me. One is at the Fells, right? Actually, that's several sites at the Fells. One is as Mass Audubon Habitat, which is currently closed, but this one, we cannot even access it, so right now our study is on hold, right? And one is at Fresh Pond, right? So uh, our most active uh, citizen science happen at the growing center. Fresh pond is a little bit on and off, but we are there. We're definitely doing a lot there, uh, but we don't have enough volunteers going there. So uh, I'd like to change that this year if we can. And uh, the FELS is very well attended. So no matter which site you decide to survey, one or several, right? Um, 
for us, what is important is the research and the data quality, right? So understanding the protocol and the community quality. So that means that no matter what, there's going to be a mandatory field training. So for a few of uh, you, you know, it comes naturally because you come to our, you know, what I call now the monthly uh, office field hour, right? Actually, we do that several times a week, so we have regular groups. Uh, but this field training is important so that we can challenge our knowledge together and work and then practice these skills and certainly these visual skills. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the COVID-19 protocol because it's really time specific, meaning next week might change, right? And it's site specific. What I can tell you for sure is that uh, at the growing center, that won't happen without me anyway, because you cannot enter, right? So uh, you will have to go through this first training with me or to come at a session with me. And then once we have, I have people who are uh, trained, right? Then I can offload and then they can become leader and take little groups with them. Uh, the felts is slightly different, but you usually people like to come in a group because the felts you have to hike a little bit. Um, the thing that are important is field ethics and the survey protocol. So uh, this presentation is also somehow a resource for you because you have the slides and each of these slides, you know, or each of these links, things are linked, right? So if you click there, you're going to see the protocol and actually we just finished updating it. Uh, not that you need to read the 40 pages of protocol, uh, but it's there because transparency is very important for us, right? Uh, but if you jump uh, to, for example, you know, the, the site, then here you, you start to have some details. So the, the transact, the circles where we count, and these kind of things. So I think it's a pretty nice, uh, you know, summary of what we do right? there. Um, and then in the field, what we'll do is the transact work and monitoring practice together, right? So you, um, and um, where we can give to each other, one another, photo documentation tips. I have a bunch of those because I've been doing that for quite a while. And this uh, field, or, uh, office field hours, right, are also there uh, to answer any question. Although we also have a forum and the forum is easily accessible where you can ask those questions there as well. So, ethics. I'm not going to go into the details, but know that, you know, for us, it's about zero impact when we can. In all cases, trying to minimize disruption and usually to let them be. Although I confess that with a wasp, I have a tendency to be a paparazzi and I come very close to a wasp. I'm kind of a wasp whisperer. Same, and uh, Mike with the dragonflies. So, but in general, be careful because we are there with bees and insects and spiders. And often, because we have a tendency to focus on one thing, we forget about the rest. So when you go to that plant to look at this little critter that you saw and that you want to take a picture of, remember that, you know, uh, from where you are to that plant, there are other things, you know, along the way. Be careful to not trample vegetation. So pay attention to where you are, you know, keep your bearing in mind. Uh, and uh, for sure, when you start to have, uh, you know, mammals, birds, etc., make sure that you always have a distance. Um, what I want to give there uh, at some point in the field is to have a little, um, little handout just to have that in mind so that people you know, have it with them. Even a digital handout. So I'm not going to go into that um, because you can access that very easily and we'll do that in the field anyway. And we have a full, same thing here, there is a link, there is a full etiquette, a rule of conduct with all the explanation behind the scene. Why is a red light okay and not a white light, right? And all this kind of thing. Why is feeding or baiting not acceptable even if you want to attract a bird, right? Uh, the importance of being slow and quiet and uh, actually the harm of noise pollution that we understand more and more. So uh, we don't need to do that today, but you know, we have full description of all that. So the four sites. So I'm seeing, let me see. I'm seeing uh, Fresh Pond maybe and the Fells and the Growing Center. So I'm going to just look, just to give you an idea, same thing, everything is linked, that these are our partner, right? And this is the sites. Let's click, for example, so here, this is, uh, behind that, there is a dynamic map. So I'm going to click on that. And the dynamic map or the interactive map really describe all our sites. And that's pretty nice because you can see the transect. So if you decide to go at the Fells, this is the first transect here. And if you do the visual survey, then, I mean, the idea is to stop at regular, at regular, at random spot along the transect and to stop within a certain perimeter and take pictures of everything that lands or fly, you know, in the vicinity, right? Uh, same thing with the second transect. If you were at Fresh Pond, for example, 
uh, growing center. Here's a growing center. And so it's a very rich kind of map with tons of information as well. Um, tip your, of your fingers. So here, this is a transect. Here you have the transect. And here in the case of the growing center, rather than having you know, a three or five random spots, this is small enough that you can just walk the entire you know, uh, transect and take the pictures of everything that you see there. Right? Uh, and if you are at Fresh Pond, I want to mention that one uh, because the Fresh Pond site here, I'm going to reduce that. So here, information about this site. There's three transects. The two main transects are this one, transect one and transect two. Uh, and this one, you know, three, five spots along the transect, you know, five minutes at each time, you take the picture of everything that lands. What you see here are our other survey for counting. But that transect here, this one is one that you cannot do on a regular basis because this is, uh, how do you say that, um, protected, right? So there we go, uh, usually I go, so there needs to be a leader, right? And we have uh, the permission from the rangers to go there. Uh, a few times a year uh, to survey what's inside, which is, by the way, fascinating because what's inside is really different than what's outside, right, on the visit. So it's really very interesting to see that. Plus, it's less dis disrupted or disturbed. So it's very rich here, very, very interesting. So that's a transect. We'll do that in the field. Okay. Uh, and here, you see that this is the INAT, and I assume that all the people I see here are familiar with INAT. So these are the different projects, right? So if we, I click there on the Iwa the Fels, right? You're going to see that, by the way, we don't just um, uh, record about insects, we record about a, a lot of other things. These were some of this morning uh, recording that I did uh, at Long Pond. I was uh, counting at Long Pond. Always my phone. I didn't touch my... Uh, my macro camera or my, I touched my long lens for a uh, uh, Red Hawk. There, is a, there was a commotion at some point, uh, you know, nut hatches, grackles, and there was such uh, noise. And uh, actually it's because there was a Red Hawk that landed on the, on the limb, you know, on the, on the log, and I took, uh, I got the shot of the Red Hawk. Not with my phone, but with my, um, with my camera. All right. So most of you know that, Mina, you're going to know that, and Lucy, uh, you're going to know that very soon. I just want to double check one thing because I'm confused by one thing. I'm looking at, uh, oh, here we are. We have everybody here. Okay. I am you and I see Amy. I see Amy now. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, as I said, because I don't know uh, when people uh, entered in this um, uh, meeting, all of that, these slides are going to be uh, at your disposal and you're going to be able to click and to see the, the training, the training, the, the transect behind the scene, the dynamic map. Okay. In a nutshell, for this survey number one, which is about seeing what it is about, super easy, right? You get to your site yeah. a few times a month. Ideally, in the high season, you know, one times a week would be really good, right? And what you do here, the first thing that you do is to record your time and the weather condition. My trick, you know, before I was you know, tapping on my phone, all this information, etc. You know what I do now? Very simple. Uh, so I have an Android phone. I suppose the iPhone is the same thing. So at the top, I have the weather information. So this is, you know, my weather thing. And I take a screenshot of that, first screen. And then I go down a little bit because it gives me the humidity and then the wind speed. Wind speed. And I take a second screenshot. So when I enter my site, I, to take, I take two screenshots just to have all the weather condition, the time, right, wind speed, and temperature. And the reason why I do that is, by the way, when you are doing an insect survey, you need to be within a certain range of temperature, which is roughly um, 13 degrees Celsius above that, right? So you should do that usually after eight in the morning. I think that the best, best time, although it's nice to randomize as well, right, is to go late morning or beginning of the afternoon. Although it can be hard, take a hat, right? Because the sun can really, you know, at the fresh pond, the sun can really hit you there. So first thing you do, you record time and the weather. By the way, when I exit the site, I do the same thing like that. I can have a range. And here's the reason why. 
Because when you arrive at eight in the morning, your temperature might be at 14 degrees Celsius. And when you leave, so today I was three hours and a half at Long Pond because I was doing all the surveys at once, you know, the birding and the phenology and the counting, etc. So uh, it took me three hours and a half to cover you know, the Long Pond area. When I left, there were six degrees difference or something like that, right? So a huge uh, range. Same thing with the humidity. The humidity varies a lot. So these are important pieces of information, right? Um, then, oh, that, this is uh, this little thing here. And then you walk your transect following, you know, the protocol. And we'll go over that in the field together, wherever you go, where you want to go. And then, so this is a three to five random spot. You know, you take sets of anything that lands on the, pl uh, on the plant or fly nearby. I'll show you in a minute. Um, and remember that shot about the habitat. And I say remember because I'm at fault myself. Uh, how many times do I forget? And here's a typical situation where I forget uh, to take that picture. Is I'm looking at a gull, right? And, and I'm so focused on that gull. Today there I was looking at some oak or sassafras. I forgot. No, that was an oak. And there was this spongy oak gull, right? And I'm looking and it's a beautiful spongy thing, right? And I'm taking this very close shot. And then... I go to something else. I forgot to take the picture of the oak itself. And how many times do I have people on iNaturalist know about gall who say, hey, by the way, what is a host plant? I'm like, I forgot. So I keep forgetting that host plant for the gall. Don't do that. Be better than I am on that. Um, and then after that, you're going to annotate, to upload and annotate your record. And I'll show you a little screen, uh, sh uh, a little uh, practice there on the fly. Very easy. Don't forget when you leave, and I should add that to record the time and the weather again to have this range because this is the thing that we're going to uh, be important to annotate those records. So, I naturalist. I know the two Jennifers know that Lisa, Mina, Lucy a little bit. And Lucy, I'm not sure. Mina, I'm sure because I've seen some records from Hawaii. If I'm correct, uh, I'm not sure about Lucy, but you learn a ton. Tom, I know. Amy is probably a little bit new on that. I don't know about Tara and Nadia. Uh, so, uh, do you know anything about iNaturalist? I've, oh, you're asking me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done it a few times with um, my, my students as well Where as my I, kids. Where is <laughs> All right. Okay. And Amy, I think you're pretty new to that. You had an account, but you never really used it, right? You're on mute. <laughs> I cannot hear you. <laughs> I'm going to unmute you. No. Uh, I cannot unmute you. You're in control. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I tried it recently. I'm not going to have a problem with it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm sure. And Nadia, I don't know, but if you want to say something, do not hesitate. All right. Yeah, we're going uh, to try to figure it out. Um, so yeah. we're also very new to it. Okay, perfect, perfect. So there is a really easy, and when you have this uh, slide, you just click there and you'll have all that. But I'm going to give you a little quick uh, gist of it, right? Uh, from the app, although I rarely use the app just because I prefer to use my phone as a camera and I deal with the upload later because it's much more efficient. But people do it this way and it's a nice way to get in. So very simple. So this is the screen of, um, this was a screen of my entry uh, screen, I would say, on the INAT at the time. And uh, I was coming back from Florida, so I see because I see a spine back, old weaver and this kind of thing. They are not here. They are in Florida. So, and here you see there's a little plus, the uh, iPhone app is kind of similar, click on that, then you can take a picture, I never do that, <laughs> I usually choose a pic because I use my camera, you know, as uh, my phone as a camera, but it doesn't matter, and then here you focus on your uh, plan, so here I was actually in the felt looking at the round lobe hepatica, right, um, then you click here and INAT is really very good at making suggestions and they are becoming really better and better because there's a lot of machine learning behind the scene, which is one of my uh, other or past, you know, domain there. Um, so they are really able to learn from the massive amount of data that has been uh, reaching INAT and they recognize that um, this is probably a round lobe hepatica, although for round lobe hepatica or hepaticas in general, the leaf is very important. And that's why this screen is not that great because usually what I do Instead of adding one picture, I usually add several pictures, right? I make sure that I have a set. So I need to redo that at some point, so it's better. So here, you see you can add you know, several pictures. So I had the inside, and at some point I had the leaf there, right? So you can select after that, that is the round lobe de patica. 
Um, if you do not know what it is, uh, the goal is to actually avoid to leave it at unknown so that it doesn't stay in the, uh, how do you call that, the limbo of iNaturalist because if, when it's unknown, nobody looks at it. Uh, if you are wrong, so let's say that it was not a wrong load, the patika, the community would have come into the picture to correct me. People are very quick at correcting each other. So that works also on iNaturalist and that's cool because that's how you learn as well, right? So sometimes I take a guess because I want to have a quick, you know, identification, even if I know if it's the wrong guess, but usually when I don't know, I stay in the taxonomy a little bit higher. So here, this is a species. Uh, sometimes, so you would see that you can go higher in the taxonomy, you choose the genus or the family or the order, etc., etc. So uh, it also depends on what you are looking at. You know, when you look at an insect, it's one thing, or a plant. When you look at a mushroom or a fungi, it's a whole different story there because you know it's very hard to identify them just from pictures still. So very easy to do that, right? And then once you're done with that in the Android, you just click there. The iPhone is slightly different, but you know it takes a few tries to really get it. And then, so from the observation, there I was in New Hampshire and uh, I knew it was a tricolored bumblebee. So what I did is I did input it as a tricolored bumblebee and you can see that I have a full set and with this full set, when I'm trying to reach the complete set where I have, um, uh, you'll see another one. I have, you know, the side, I have the dorsal, and then I try to have the facial marking of the bee, etc. Uh, now, I'm not telling you that it's easy. That's why it's patience, but it's what is fun about it because, you know, they move a lot. So sometimes I'm lucky, sometimes I'm not lucky. Uh, if I don't have a complete set, it's okay. I still put it there because some people are super good to really know some keys that I don't know. I don't know everything about bee. I don't know much about bees. Uh, but they can look at, I don't know, the air or whatever, the color, you, the bandit, you know, they have a, a segmented body and they know exactly the number of segments and the color that they should be. So, you know, a lot of people can tell you stuff there. Um, what happened is usually, uh, so the, 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 identification process, so it's cool because you store your data, we use it for storing the data, right? Because it's also a global database and the community comes into the picture, right? And what they do, so I knew it was a tri tricolored bumblebee, I was pretty sure about that. Someone else came back, came back, came in, Rusty Bee, so I guess he knows bees. And he said, yes, it's a tricolored bumblebee. So with that, somehow, uh, it helped to have a two third and the two third criteria, uh, give it what's called a research grade, which by the way, I don't like the term research grade because trust me, to have a research grade, it would take more, but it's definitely a validation. And with that, what it does, it allows that data, by the way, to be pushed to another database, which uh, uh, to me is very important. This is a global biodiversity, uh, so JBF, let me, uh, global biodiversity inventory facility, I think, I always butcher the, uh, the acronym there. But this is a very important database because really this is a global database that is really looked by scientists worldwide. Uh, what we do at EWA, so I'm a data person, remember that, so, and I'm a statistician on top of that, so protocol, global data, open access, this thing is very important. So I want to make sure that our data account, that's your data account, right? So research grade, I don't like the term, but I like that that data is flowing to a very important database. All right. Equipment. So me, I work a lot with my phone for a reason. So it's only for the insects, right? When I do birds, when I do other stuff for mammals, etc., I always have, you know, I mean, people know me in the field. Really. I'm kind of a, a snail. I have my house with me, right? Um, but so I have a camera, I have two cameras, and I have my phone. I end up most of the time working just with my phone. I have a little magic tool, which by the way, Thanks to Lisa who asked me just before um, the meeting, what is that magnification glass? If you click here, there, let me do that. This is mine. I like mine simply because it has, so first I have a case on my phone, right? It's, uh, it's not a lens, it's a, magnif a magnification glass, right? And so mine has a very large opening, right? And so with this very large opening, what happens is I can flip it or click it very quickly. I can move it out of the way very quickly to take a habitat shot, remember? And then I can put it back without having to struggle to find the alignment of the hole or whatever you call this thing here. And what's this stuff there, right? This thing. And you now trying to align it is pretty quick. So, and it does a good job, right? It does a very good job. So I clip that. And I have that permanently because when I count, so 
I don't do just visual. I also count stuff, right? We have a group that counts. And which, by the way, I invite you to count as well with us if you want to. I'll have a training next week or something like that. But anyway, so I have that permanently on my phone and because my phone is my recording device, right? So I'm counting, I'm observing, right? And then that bug lands and here, I'm right there with my lens and I can just, you know, take the shot, right? Or the shots, right? So I like to work that way. And this is a Pixel 2, it's old, but it does a pretty good work. I'll show you a couple of things in, um, I have a little sample that I wanted to go through with you. Okay, uh, so, but there are other lens, you know, um, one trick, one tip. So this, mine is a 20 times, I'm trying to find it. I think it's 20, 20 times. If you go above that, it becomes tough. Uh, because you have a lot of distortion, you know, with any of this magnification lens, what happens? So you have to be very close to the subject, right? So it's a dexterity, you know, it takes a little bit of practice, but it comes very quickly. And then, but you have to be careful because the stronger the magnification, the bigger the distortion on the edge, right? Uh, so it doesn't, for me, 25 doesn't work. 20 works fine, right? Very fine. Okay, let's go back to where I was. So me, what I usually like to do is I use my phone as a camera, I just take the shots. I'm not in the INAT app at all. I barely open the INAT, right? Because I do that after. Uh, and there is a reason for that, because when you open the INAT, right, you consume data, so that's money, right? Uh, and when you're in the field, when you're in the fells, for example, you know, it really roams, right? So I don't want to spend that money. I don't need that, right? So I only use INAT when I'm looking at something. I say, huh, what could it be? And I'd like to have a suggestion from INAT. That's essentially that. Then when I am at home, I use a desktop version of INAT where I bulk load. So I'm going to show you that, right? Uh, and here. So I'm on INAT. I'm going to my INAT. This is where I am. This is my observation. This is some of my observation this morning, all taken with my phone. I didn't upload my camera. Uh, the red tail is not here yet, right? So let me show you. Beautiful. So I start to have a good eye. Can't see really far, but <laughs> my uh, plus with COVID-19, I couldn't have my uh, eyeglasses uh, fixed, so I have to wait. So it's becoming uh, problematic there, but I can see from close. So I was, uh, there was something that was on the leaf and I said, oh, look, I know this guy, I'm super happy when I see them. So not bad, so I have a, a full set, enough for identification, see that? And this is what I mean by the edge effects here, right? You have an edge effect there. But it's okay, so this is, you know, this little assassin, tail assassin bug. So if I wanted to have a super shot for, you know, photography in my bedroom or whatever, okay, I would use something else, but it's pretty good. It's really pretty good, right? Um, so we take um, here, another shot here. Yeah, I, wanted to, I was trying to have the head. Oh, yeah, something there. It's amazing how you start to have an attention for details when you're, it is really cool. Uh, another one, I got the butt there, right? The butt is in, right? So it's a fair shot. It's, this one is good, right? So it's, it's a fair set. For identification, it's really good enough. So you can have that with your phone. Okay, I have better ones, actually. Because here I was really, uh, from, you know, the leaf was high, so I was extending, so I didn't do the best, you know, the best work, but still. So, oh, let me go back and keep forgetting that. So this is some of my sets there, but now what I want to show you is what would you do? So I created a little sample here. So there is some picture I didn't upload. So I uploaded my pictures from my iPhone, right? So when I go to my uh, Google, uh, what is it? My uh, Google album, I'm on an Android phone, so I uploaded all the records from today. So here they are in the little folder. And look what I do. So let me go back. I'm going to say, okay, upload. Here's the upload, right? I click on the upload. And I'm going to fake the drag and drop because actually I dropped them already. So I just you know, created that, boom. Everybody's seeing, right, what I'm doing? Okay, good. And then I drop it here, boom. Okay takes time. That's why I dropped them before. Uh, so here, actually. Oh, not bad. Okay. So I'm not going to work with this set because I already worked with it a little bit. So this is what it would look like, right? So I just dropped. So today I had 137 pictures, right? And then I took a little sample, right? And um, so just for, for you, I don't want to go through 137 pictures, you know, with you guys. 
So, so it comes pretty quickly. And what is cool is I can really work with this set very quickly. So I'm going to go with my work set a little bit. I'm going to move that, which is here. No, it's not here, which is here. Okay. Uh, so I just moved the little things there. Here, this is a lady slipper, and you can see that before they were split, because what I did, I'm going to do the same thing with the Canada Mayflower. This is a Canada Mayflower here. You know, so I took the habitat shot with the leaf, right? Uh, usually when I go for a plant, I also look at the underneath of the leaf, all this kind of stuff, and the stem, and the, you know, the base of the leaf with the stem, this kind of things. Uh, Canada Mayflower is pretty much known, so you don't need to do as much, so I know that. Um, but here I was also, I wanted to look really at the sexual, the reproductive, the sexual uh, reproductive organ to see where they were in their phenology, you know, what phase they were. So I was interested by that, right, and to record that. So look what I do. I simply, I'm going to take this one as a first. I always choose my first picture when I do that in a very strategic way so that it somehow kick the community to say, oh yeah, that's a Canada Mayflower, right? Let's look at what I naturally says it is. Okay, first, so they say the genus is among the Mayflowers and the False Solomon Seal. Okay, good. And actually, the first suggestion in terms of the species that they provide here is a Canada Mayflower. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And I know it's a Canada Mayflower, so I'm going to go with that. All right. Second one that was, I was counting. Uh, we have one of our mark trees at the Long Pond. And so, and this little, I, I love this guys. I love hoppers, I love leaf hoppers. I don't know why, but uh, I mean, I love all bugs, but I don't know, I have a little soft spot for leaf hoppers. Um, I couldn't do a good job in getting the dorsal, it's okay. Um, and you know, that's, uh, that's the thing about nature and being a naturalist, you learn how to be humble, right? So, uh, so I did my best, my best, because I didn't want to disturb it you know, necessarily. Uh, and it's not that important there. So I have two shots. And I, let's see what, I don't know which one I'm going to choose. Maybe this one as the first one, right? I'm going to give you another trick, by the way. And here, let's see what they say. No, it's not a gnat. So they're pretty far off and that's not surprising, right? Because, you know, the picture is really tough. However, look at that. I mean, down, down, it's not a green, I don't think it's a green leaf hopper, but I know for sure it's a leaf hopper, right? I've seen it enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go with this guy because I really don't know, but I'm going to go with the leaf hopper, right? Um, leaf hopper, type that. It's probably a typical leaf hopper, not completely sure, but if someone, if I'm wrong, trust me, someone is going to correct me, right? Or someone is going to say, no, you cannot say that because we are, you are missing that, that. And it's fine because you're learning also, you know, how to do better set over time. Uh, I told you I love leaf hopper. Here's another one here. And this one, my bet is, so the two there contiguous are the, actually the same guy. Uh, so this one here, it's a little bit harder. It's from further away, but still give a key about the size with respect to the uh, oak. This is an oak tree here. I uh, could have done better by having the full oak, by the way. Um, oh, wait a minute. I think I'm wrong. I'm on the birch here. I think it's a birch, okay. Because I'm like, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't look like a oak. So I see why this habitat shot is important because then you look and you say, what am I looking at, right? I was on the birch, uh, check my record. But I'm going to take that at the first one. And by the way, sometime I play the game of I naturalist to see what they're coming with. Uh, it's a coppery leaf hopper. I, I think that I'm pretty certain of that. I'm going to ask, or wonder, I wonder what they're going to say on this one. See, they give something slightly different. That's the same guy. So I'm going to choose that as my first one, right? But it's, it's important, it's interesting to play the game of the suggestion on INAT with different shots and then to group them and to say, okay, my best guess is that. So for me, my best guess is really that because I've seen them a lot last year. So I think really, I'm pretty confident it's a copper leaf hopper. This morning I was going for caterpillar. So this one you're going to say, oh, Claire, don't I? Are they just the same? Not quite. So I took two shots, so always took more than one shot. So this is actually a caterpillar, but this is not a moth. This is a sawfly larva. And you can tell by this little prolex there, right? So I'm starting, last year I made a few mistakes with them. I start to get more confident with my sawflies larva. I love sawflies as well. And here, the reason why I have two and I'm going to put them together is here because I have one of the, the butt is clear <laughs> and then the moth is clear. 
the mouse, I'm sorry, the mouse, you know, the, the, the front. So I'm going to pick that as my first one. Uh, let's see what I naturally says it is. Not bad, not bad at all, right? So I don't know if it's a wheel or so fly. Um, see, I'm missing my habitat shot here. I have to go back to my record, but I think I was on an oak. Yes, I was on an oak. I was on a white oak here. So um, here I'm going to go with common saw flies, so the saw flies, which is a family. So I'm a higher than the genus, I'm at the family. We have our pink lady sleepers. Look at this beauty. They are popping out right now, bracked. This is really a fantastic little flower there. Um, this is interesting because you see here, there's a slit here. Uh, one of the only um, uh, bees that can um, uh, pollinate it is a bumblebee. They really push themselves in. And you see these little colors that you see here, right? This is kind of a highway, right? Uh, the colors are seen differently by insects, so they see that, and it's a highway to this opening. Uh, nature is just wonderful. So, and I have a shot about the entire habitat. Sorry, I missed that. Here it is, right? And you know, the leaf here, very typical leaf of the pink lady sleepers. So they are everywhere in the fells right now. Do not try to transplant them. Doesn't work, right? Uh, I don't think it's allowed anyway, uh, but I know that some people try to transplant them. It doesn't work that way. They have a very specific uh, a relationship uh, through the rhizome and their environment. And here, so uh, this is a cutie eating a, a thing here, which is a caterpillar of some sort, maybe a sawfly larva of some sort. Um, I think it's a white chick uh, jumping spider. So I'm going to pick, so I have several shots. I can see a little bit the back. I didn't want to disturb it. I have the face and the two white cheeks there. That's why I said it might be white cheek uh, jumper. Uh, let's do, I have a, yeah, still the face, really cute. I do, and they're very tiny, very, very, very small. You can have a sense, this is a, a full deep. This is actually, same thing, I'm missing my habitat shot here. This is actually a witch hazel there, right? It's eating and I try to not disturb it too much. I'm going to choose this one as a first one. Let's see what I naturally says it is. Why don't you jump in spiders? Okay, so. Genus. I think I'm going to go and take the plunge there with this one. And that's going to be my first one. I'm going to put them. And then we have one more. I was super happy to see that. I love those guys too. Uh, look at this beauty. So um, this is big. This is really big. And that was on top of uh, oh, hickory. It's on a hickory here. I can look. This is a compound leaf here that you see. And this, is, this might be even a shagbark hickory. because I remember uh, some of the bracts there. And here, see, look at the, people don't realize that, but that detail on the leaf, that's why it's important to have a dorsal, right? So, because all this little detail, all this configuration, some people are super good at that. They have the configuration of all the crane flies, whatever, in their mind, and they say, oh, this is that one, right? Uh, so, I took the dorsal, I was uh, lucky. I wanted to have the face, so I, you know, I was trying to get closer on the, on the wing, just to make sure that I had all the configuration of the wing in, in one shot, right? Then I wanted to have the face, look at the face, and you know, this kind of uh, thorax here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is fascinating. And this was with my phone. Again, that was with my phone, right? And my little magnifying glass. And here, a little bit closer there, right? And I was successful in not I wished I had a little bit of a better shot of the mouse. They have really, a, they seem to have a fascinating mouse there, right? Um, and then I had the full one there and I'm missing, you know, my hickory shot, right? Again, right? So I'm giving advice that I'm not even following. I'm going to go there with this one. Uh, and yes, it's a, a probably a giant crane fly. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go to the genus uh, level rather than going, you know, at the species because I know that there are several different a species in this uh, genus uh, set there. And this one is good, uh, or maybe a little bit more, I don't know, maybe this one should be my first because it has a full view with one clear shot of one wing. Okay, so let's try. Let's see what it says there. It goes, see, it gives different, like giant crane farm is down, right? So I'm going to go, as I said, with, um, what was it? Typical genus, yes, okay, that's fine. See, we don't even have it anymore. Okay, I'm going to go to the Ticula. Genius level. And I'm going to put them in. Boom, 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 boom. 
So the thing to do there is to annotate. So the thing that I always do, so of course I'm talking, so it's taking a little bit longer, but is I always check that where are the stuff that I took? Because sometimes your phone can, by the way, you need to have geolocation, right? So that you can map these things. So your phone needs to have your geolocation or your camera needs to have the geolocation on, right? And uh, unless if it was, you know, uh, an endangered species, uh, I do not obfuscate or obscure the geolocation because I want, you know, to be, uh, that to be used by the scientists, right? Um, other than us, right? Because we have a more, you know, a closer partnership with uh, entomologists, etc. So um, here I was indeed in this area, so very good, and I remember where we, yeah, that was there. That's one of our first circles. This is, a, you know, the caterpillars there. Yeah, I was, uh, I met someone there. I encountered someone there. Yeah, yeah, that's, I'm in a good location, so I validate. And there, I'm going to show you something, because this is something that at the beginning you might not do, but I, I would love that you, you know, get into the mode to enrich the data by what I mentioned. Right. Remember? Oh, I need to have it here. Um, so these are fields. And this is, remember this screenshot that you took of the weather, et cetera, et cetera? This is how you annotate. Um, so I don't need to have an email from you with this information. It's much better to have it here because well, it's right in the database. So we just save an enormous amount of time there. So this morning, I'm going to look, so I'm going to look at my phone. Um, I should have took, uh, taken a note of that before, but it's going to be quick. So this morning, um, the average temperature was of 25. The wind speed, wind speed was light. I remember that because it was about 18 kilometers between 14 and 18, which correspond to a light uh, wind speed. Uh, so let's look. So I was there for 210 minutes. Okay. The wind speed was light. The weather was super sunny. See how quick it is? The temperature, the average temperature in this case was about 25 Celsius. But you, um, yeah, Celsius. It's easy to, um, uh, uh, how do you say that, convert. So on my Mac, I have a Mac. If I do the common space bar and I type 25C, it gives me the temperature in Fahrenheit. Uh, I never use Fahrenheit. I'm, you know, naturally bound to Celsius, right? <laughs> so, um, so, and scientific studies goes, you know, with the metric system there. So 25, that's what I recorded on my snapshot. And then uh, what do I have? Uh, group size, that was only me today. Uh, the importance of group, that's why I like that we do things in group. Uh, it's because you challenge each other. It's only when we do phenology, when we uh, look at, you know, plants and we are looking at the phenophases, you know, the developmental phase of a plant, uh, we challenge each other and we increase really the quality of the data. So it's nice. Uh, people love that we do things in groups because regularly, even if they want to do stuff on their own, regularly they know that they have this little field office hour, or office field hour, whatever, you know, order, I should put the words in there, uh, where we can gather together, strengthen, challenge our knowledge, and improve actually both our identification skills and, you know, um, the quality of our data. Uh, there is no count. Count of individual observed usually is for uh, the birds, although for insects, you know, when they appear in clumps, that should happen. No behavior observed there. What am I missing? Let me see. Fields. I'm missing something. Uh, uh, what do I have here? Come on. Ah, uh, okay. I'm going to fake it. No, I <laughs> cannot fake it. Observation time was, what was it? <laughs> Observation group size? Oh, okay, let's do that. So observation effort, wind speed, weather, air temperature. I feel like I'm missing something. Okay, I can put it uh, later. But you see, so you can enrich the data. And so by that, that means that later on, when I go in the database, when our scientists go in the database, or when scientists are going in the database, not even the one who are linked to us here, they can filter. They can create what's called data cubes and really get a zoom on very specific, you know, uh, period or uh, uh, a cube of data that hides code. So once I've done that, right, I just submit. So I explain everything, but it takes me about, you know, a few minutes. That's it. So very easy to do that um, to bulk load. I prefer that than doing that right from the app, right? Um, because by the way, the annotation that I just did, that on the app, 
you cannot do it uh, very easily. So then you have to go back, you know, on uh, the desktop version in order to fulfill these things, which uh, I think is, so I'm for efficiency more than anything. So my observations are in, let's look at them in a better way uh, with uh, a grid. And there they are, right? I'm actually on the, on the INET. There they are. Questions about that so far? Good? Excellent. Very easy. And you know, uh, the thing with us is we are a super inclusive group. There is never, you know, bad question, whatever. We're there to learn together and we're there to help each other. So it's, uh, and this is important data that you are gathering here. So let's go back to where I was. Super easy. You have it. I forgot what comes next. Oh, you see there? This is, a, oh, this is not mine, this is just a PNG, but this is a Rusty Patch Bumblebee. Something to know, we have something like, um, I think there's 20,000 different species of bees in uh, the world, and we have in America something like 4,000 bees. Uh, in Massachusetts alone, we are really losing bees, or at least they are becoming harder to see. So I guess there is a, what's called a definition where we lose them in volume. And this one is an endangered species. Yeah. Uh, beautiful little bees. Um, all right. The thing, so again, this slide, anywhere you click, there is something. So if you click on that, so this is another set, this is a good set here. I'm going to go back to that, I just want to start it. But here, um, of course, geolocation, clear and in-focus photo, right? Um, and here, that was with my phone and my little um, magnifying last year. Uh, I have the habitat, this is a water and block. And by the way, I duplicate the data, I forgot to do that. Um, sometimes to make sure that, you know, when you have the interaction, I forgot to do it here, but the interaction, there is another field, which is interaction with, and that's where you can record the plant. Now, if you don't know the plant, right, you can duplicate the record. So uh, here, let me show you quickly. What was it? That was on the witch hazel. Um, I'm not going to do it here, but here what I could do if I decided, although it would be a little confusing because I don't have enough of a shop, this one is probably better if I wanted to. So here I could, Lisa, that's what I was talking about. I could duplicate it, right? And if I click on that, it would create an exact copy of that, except that it would not name the species. And for the species, I would say, okay, I would first put a comment to say, by the way, the target of his observation here is a spider. And for the other one, I would put a comment to say the target of his observation is the host plant. The spider is recorded, boom, and I would you know, give the link to the other one, right? So I would duplicate there, or in this case, I don't really care about duplicating it. What you can do here is, see that? I'm going to associate it, not in terms of interaction, but with a plant species, which is, I know it's an American witch hazel. So if you know the plant, you can do that that way. Boom, see that? And I enrich the data, because so, what you are recording here is the habitat, the species interaction. I'm going to add that, boom, done, okay? So um, to go back there, okay, so I have, uh, I think that actually for this one, I recorded the water and lock. Um, and see that? I have for this was, do people recognize this was, by the way? Just for the sake of testing you. <laughs> this is, beautiful. they are beautiful. Um, this is a common aerial yellow jacket. And the, the face kind of take, uh, say it. And by the way, look at that. See the tongue? You can see the tongue here. You can see the tongue. It's pretty cool. I, I'm pretty happy about this one. Um, and here, so you have the facial markings. You have the side, because that on the side here are important keys for identification. And then you have the dorsal here. So it's a nice minimum set. You know, sometimes I put more than necessary. So okay, they are here, so let's put them right here. But this one is a good minimum good set. I have the side. I have the dorsal, I have the face, and I have the plant, the water and blood. Good set, right? So if you go there, right, so you, you learn that, you know, on your own and with us, right? So because uh, we like to do, um, it's only with the interns, you're going to see that Mina and Lucy with your uh, INAT uh, observation uh, milestone. We're going to do some critiquing session where we're going to say, okay, uh, this is good. Uh, and plus we learn from each other. Uh, this is missing, uh, and Michael said, oh, I would have done that that way, or, oh, this is cool. So we have this little critiquing session that we do so that we can really improve our observation sets over time. So this document, we have uh, a guide, 
So remember, we are known for our guides as well. And so this is a, a nice little guide, wildlife documentation photography essential. You can have it from um, the site or going to our site. Oh, by the way, this is our site. This is not from here. This is from Argentina. We have one of our writers. She's a young biologist from Argentina. We met in Sumatra. So I do weird stuff, uh, conservation oriented, but this is our site here and this is all our guides there. So uh, anyway, to go back to this wildlife documentation thing. So it's uh, um, divided in three things, taking ethical photos, identifiable pictures, and then here you have a species specific. Uh, species is the wrong term, it's more group, right? Um, um, specific photography. So taking identifiable, we went through that a little bit. Um, and here you see that, so you have the birds, we can have details about how to do uh, non-woody plants, herbaceous plants, uh, there is some about trees and shrubs. At some point I want to have the pictures in line, it's uh, heavy loading on the website, so that's why we have it this way, but you know, if you click, so here, non-woody plants might be Laura here. If I click here, you're going to have an example of, you know, taking, you know, symmetry in a plant that might be important, right? Um, that's pretty cool, actually, to see uh, uh, the, the activities on INAT because uh, some people are in charge of taxon. It's a very large worldwide community. Uh, so here there was a change of taxon for the bladder word here. So she took a set. It was an early set. Oh, there's a little spider here. I wonder if she duplicated the record here. Um, <laughs> and then... Oh, super interesting. I don't know enough about the bladder words. That might be a root on the seat. Uh, on the seat. Very cool. I don't know enough about this one. So she took a full set and see that? That's, this is an important one, by the way. Forgot to mention that. Another tip. With an insect, it's tough. And that's why habitat is important as well, because it gives you a sense of the size relative of this insect relative to what it is on, right? With a plant, often, you know, you're going to see often uh, our records with a, th a thumb in it. Oh, because there is a cool, cool little dimension, universal dimension about hands, by the way. Um, so it's a good, actually, uh, indicator of size. Uh, if you don't know that, but by the way, this, uh, this length here, I don't know if you see me, but the length of, I don't know how you call that, from the tip to the first joint here, this is about three centimeters, right? So us, when we count, you know, the other survey, when we count, we have to record uh, the herbivory, so how a plant, you know, first the plant or the leaf, you know, average leaf size, right, from the tip to, from the, tip to the base, right, so we use our fingers because uh, I don't want to carry, I'm carrying far too much in the field already, so I just go with my thumb. And there, uh, I, I made sure, <laughs> so now I know that for me, my, uh, my nail across is one centimeter. So often I have my finger, I say, okay, one second, okay. So I use my, my, the nail of my index to say, okay, that's a centimeter wide. Right? So we have, but this one, it's interestingly, a large majority of people have three centimeters from the tip to the first joint there. So this, so you have access to that. So look at it because you're going to see and the insects are here, right? Um, and this is this aerial yellow jacket there. Uh, if you, Sometimes for some species of insect, only the dorsal is okay. Butterflies, usually, a dorsal can be pretty much, you know, it. Although it's hard sometimes to have a butterfly, you know, dorsal, right? Um, so here, and we have a few other um, guides and resources. See, this is, actually this is mine. This is an old one. It's a little bit fuzzy. It's not with my phone. It was with a regular camera a long time ago. And so here it's pretty, the dorsal is pretty clear that it is indeed, you know, uh, Eastern ti uh, Tiger Swallowtail, right? So this is a good guide that we put together, right? Uh, this is all the things that we study anyway, um, that we can go and we will go through when we are together in the field. All right. So I um, think, let me check. Yeah, this is a wonderful quote. Uh, I invite everybody, you know, every one of us is a naturalist at heart, right? This is a quote from Gerard Durrell. He's a um, naturalist. Uh, I think he was British. I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, people, naturalists, people who have an inclination to be in nature and to observe nature, and we all have that in us, are going to be super important, right? Uh, so I invite you to do that with us, of course, and uh, to do it in a rigorous way because we want to have rich data uh, really helping. Um, but uh, I like we do. I like what we do. I like our group a lot. So wonderful quote. That's us, etc., etc. I'm just checking. 
questions. Is it okay? Did you learn something or not at all? No? Okay, good. <laughs> Everybody's muted. You can unmute yourself and you may speak. <laughs> so who are Fresh Pond peers? And Amy is Fresh Pond and Jennifer might be Fresh Pond, right? So um, now I'm going to be in the field every week. So next week I'm going to be there. So we'll be in touch, right? We have a forum and I really invite you, Amy, and uh, the, the new people who really want to be with us to be part of that forum, right? So uh, give me the thumbs up. I cannot see Nate, Nadia or, or Tom, I know. Uh, Tara, if you want to be on the forum, give me the thumbs up. So Amy? We're also, yes, we're, we're also fresh pound, so we can oh. meet you next week. Excellent. Oh, okay, wonderful. Tara is fresh pound, Amy is fresh pound, and we- Am I fresh pound? Oh, no, no, you're not. Who is fresh pound? Nadia? Someone talked. Who was it? Amy, <laughs> that would be Nadia. That's um, definitely Fresh Pond. Okay, Nadia and Amy are Fresh Pond. Okay, so that's, that's good because we can keep our six feet, right? Um, and so that's, that's good. So we'll do that next week. Uh, usually, the only issue that we have, so in the afternoon, it's fine for me, right? The only issue is it's very weather dependent. If it rains, there's no point. If you are within 12 hours of rain, there's no point. If the temperature is too low, there's no point, right? You want to be careful about the wind, right? So I assume that next week will be good. Uh, so uh, I'll double check with you both, Nadia and Amy. And um, Jennifer, uh, so uh, Jennifer will, dis will chat about, because Jennifer is everywhere she wants to be with me. Um, and Jennifer, the other Jennifer, will talk about the Growing Center. Who is, for the grow who is with the Growing Center? Tara, do you have a location that you like? Um, I, uh, that's what I was just, I just typing. Um, I teach in Somerville, so that's how the connection came. Okay. Um, but I live in Malden and spend a lot of time at the Fells. Um, so not sure. And then I'm actually in New Hampshire right now. So, okay. Okay. So that's fine. So when you, when you come back, tell me, uh, okay. and, then, and, and yeah, just, uh, I let you, uh, do the first step because, uh, I'm not going to stalk you to know when okay. you come back. So just, okay. uh, Right. That's it. Thank you so much. I know you're welcome. You're welcome. So because like that, we can do the training in the growing center, but then you okay. can also enjoy coming, you know, at the Fells. It's really okay. cool. This the is a wonderful center. Thing. That's where the Somerville base is then. In the okay. Yeah. The growing center is the base. That's where we have our regular, uh, regular yeah. activities. All right. So what I will do is I will add you all on that forum. We actually have two forums. One that is more public, which is called the discussion forum. That's mm -hmm. where we have the, uh, uh, the thing that is more uh, larger public. And I'll have you there as well. But I'll have you on the citizen science forum. So you might see stuff about phenology because Jennifer uh, Clifford, as well as Kathy, are our phenologists. And, you know, they report there as well. It's actually cool to see what's going on there as well. Uh, but like that, I'll be able to say, okay, uh, next week, this is more or less the date. Does it work with you? Uh, and I uh, will uh, keep in touch this way. So every week I will be in the field uh, until someone can take over on some of these um, uh, uh, studies. So uh, something else? Jennifer Herbe, Herbe, do you have something that you want to? I'm going to do a little tour just to make sure I'm not missing anything. You good? Okay, baby. Okay. So you know what? Now what I'll do is just do the, that's okay. That's all I need for right now, baby. Oh, no. oh, Mina and Lucy, how is this first webinar? Do you like it? Yes, it's so helpful. I, I explored a bit of iNaturalist on my own yesterday in my backyard, which was really like enjoyable. But I actually did have one question. I was curious how frequently we'll be using the other data tools that you've mentioned. There's like Caterpillars Count and Nature's Notebook. Are those less frequently used than iNaturalist? So for you, for, for you interns, uh, you, Lucy, you're going to be really, you're going to touch everything because I want you mm -hmm. to have an experience of uh, Nature's Notebook and Phenology. Uh, and Mina is on the Phenology, but she, I also want that Mina looks at the caterpillar and understand a little bit the protocols around insect. I think that, you know, systems is important. So you, Lucy, you're going to be more on the caterpillar's count because you're going to really look at insect, you know, from uh, ecosystem you know, stories, you know, storytelling there. And Mina yeah. is going to look at them too, but she, there's going to be a focus on the phenology because for writing good informational content on phenology, I want Mina to understand what are the different developmental phase because she will describe them, right? So that, do I answer your questions? That's great, thank you. You're welcome. So any question, Mina, you good? 
Yeah, this was really exciting. Um, I've used iNaturals before, but I'm realizing there's a lot more to it than I knew. I'd never used it on a desktop before, so I didn't know that you could add all that additional information. I think a lot of people are shocked you know, because they are just used to the, to the phone. I think that Jennifer, is it you, Jennifer, uh, our favorite plant pathologist? You were surprised to see how, you know, INAT actually has a lot to offer, right? Yeah, she's muted, but she's nodding her head. <laughs> uh, Tara, is there some point? Um, I'm, I'm forgetting uh, Lisa. Lisa, do you want to? Uh, did you have a question? Are you good for now? No, this is good. I, you know, I honestly, uh, you know, I've joined you guys several times, and I wasn't even sure um, the, the insects. Whether I had to go to specific plants to try to capture insects. It sounds like I just go on the path. On the path, and yep, you see yeah. more. You see yeah. more. It's, it's really That's very helpful. Great. Thank you. Uh, Tara, some other questions? Some questions? No, you're good. It was clear enough. Okay. And uh, Amy? Um, I think I could use some more step by step instructions. Like when I go to Fresh Pond, where do I start? Do I do the whole path? Am I stopping at certain places? Am I mostly doing insect plant interactions? You know, like, is that the focus? Um, just sort of a, you know. Yes. And, I, and you will have that in the field. Okay. So in the first field, we're going to do that practice so that, you know, you have all of that. And you'll see also in the, uh, the protocol how it's described. So, okay. um, so the other yeah. thing is, I know I can't do it every week because it's many hours of uploading information. And so what's the minimum that's still useful? So you're going to see that, so the minimum useful is, you know, if you could do it, you know, a couple of times a month would be great. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and try to not necessarily put them, I mean, I, actually, I don't know. I have to think about it because it depends on what the other people are doing. At the very beginning, because the fresh pond is not as well attended, I think that, you know, you might want to pace, your, uh, pace uh, to, to put regular interval rather than having them at the same time or, you know. Right. Oh, around. you pace them out. Sure. When we have more people, then 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 that becomes a different story, right? Okay. Uh, so I would say a couple of uh, times a month, but you would be surprised how quickly. I mean, of course, I was going slowly because I was ex uh, explaining, but how quickly when you bulk load, how it goes because it's just you know pulling, putting together, done, right? Okay. So it's it's really um, it's really uh, it's really quick. It's much quicker than, uh, and I wish that Amy would do something like that for herself, just because then. When Amy, Amy is an entomologist from uh, Somerville area, oh, we are um, partner. Um, yeah. And she does it still. I want to push her to go more global that way uh, because it's much more efficient. It would be so much more efficient for her rather than having to parse the data and okay, take your notes, put them back together. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's about helping the scientists as well. There. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am used to her method, so maybe this will be quicker. Okay. <laughs> It's going to be quicker. It's going okay, to be great. very much quicker. So I'm going to try to convert Amy. I mean, it's just she doesn't, she doesn't have the time because she, she's very, um, how do you say that, amenable to that. She just mm -hmm. doesn't have the time, but I'm going to convert her to say, Amy, make it easy on yourself, right? <laughs> There's a data tool here. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, sounds Excellent. good. Excellent. Jennifer, you good? Jennifer Clifford. Yeah, he's good. And Nadia, is there something that you want to ask you're good um i'm with amy i think you know perhaps it is about you know um once we're added to the forum and if there is going to be a time that you suggest for next week mm -hmm. you know, i think we'll be we'll be ready to to go for sure excellent excellent i have no idea of what is the weather next week uh, so I'll check uh, tomorrow and I'll tell you by tomorrow and we'll have a kind of a, an idea of where to go there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all that I have uh, for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and um, I'll have, uh, for, for those one, Mina and Lucy are going to be in it, but I'm going to have the caterpillars count, the, the counting, uh, probably, I'll try to do that next week, right? So I'm, it's going to be more or less like that, but focus on caterpillar count. So that's a protocol from the University of North Carolina. Uh, it's really pretty cool as well, and you're counting bugs there on very specific trees that have been marked. Uh, and then um, we are starting at the growing center, you know, the linking part, uh, a phenology study, we did that, Jennifer and I, um, uh, this past week, 
where we are looking at specific plants, native plants, right? We want to also encourage our representative, we, we want to inform our representative in Somerville to understand that native planting is important in attracting more, you know, pollinator or beneficial insects. So in the- I have to go, but I'll, yeah. I'll see everybody, I have to go. Bye. Bye, Jennifer. So in the growing center, at the growing center, what we are doing is we are using, we are partners with the National Phenology Network, uh, Phenology. So uh, we're using uh, another protocol, which is based on Phenology. And uh, actually last year we got their Pheno Champion Award for 2019. So we're really very active and we're becoming, you know, stronger and stronger together. Bye. And uh, so we are following plant and pollinators together. So, and we're recording another kind of data. This is a little bit more, um, I'm not going to say cumbersome, it's not the right term, but it's a little bit more involved in terms of because you need to understand uh, intensity of a specific canopy leaf or these kind of things. But it's, it's really cool, uh, Mina and Lucy. Uh, I know that Jennifer knows about it, Lisa, she knows because you've been through the Nature's Notebook on the Fells, but it's, it's really cool. And that I do, you'll have the training very soon because of you two, Mina and Lucy. It pushes me, pushes us to have, you know, the training out there and, and why not have them as webinar, right? So like that, it's uh, available to everybody, right? So that's, um, that's the thing. I'm done. <laughs>